Okay, class. Today I'm going to be talking about the uh, momentum uh, bar charts. So the same way we talked about energy bar charts. So I have some examples here that I'm going to cheat of a, of a list. So the first example, let's say I have an object that's uh, it could be moving with the speed v, and you're going to apply a force to it, which means you're going to make it speed up. So the momentum bar chart for that object should look something like this. So you already have some momentum initially. So I'm going to say I have this much momentum. I can call it uh, P initial, I guess. Right? When I apply a force for a period of time, it means I'm introducing some impulse in the same direction as, as, uh, as the, uh, the direction of travel. So I'm going to say, you know what? I added this much impulse. So my, so my velocity is changing, which means my mo momentum is changing. So if I add up these two, that should give me my final momentum. It's as simple as that. Okay. The next example is I have an object moving uh, in this direction, okay? And there is a force applied to it in the opposite direction, and it's gonna bring it to rest. It's gonna stop. So my energy bar chart, I mean not energy, a momentum bar chart should look something like this. So if I choose right as positive, the momentum of this object is on the positive side, but I'm applying a force over a period of time, which means I'm applying an impulse, and my final state is like no momentum. So I think it makes sense to make the impulse applied equal in size to the initial momentum. So this is the initial momentum, and this is the impulse. And the impulse has to be negative so that you end up with no momentum at the end. And if you look at this picture, it actually makes sense. You're traveling to the right, the force is acting to the left, so the momentum has to be, I mean, the impulse has to be negative. The next example is I have two objects, A and B, coming at each other. Okay? And after the collision, I'm just going to say that they both go to the, to the right. Well, let's see if we can do a momentum uh, chart for that. So for A, it's in the, the momentum is in the, no, actually, you know what? I'm going to pick my system to just be A for this case, right? And I'll do the system as just B, and then I'll just put them together. Okay. So if it's just A, it has an initial momentum, but it's going to have an impulse caused by B hitting it going in the negative direction. So there will be some impulse here, okay? And uh, A continues in that direction. In other words, this B has to bounce back. So how much momentum does A have? It has this much. In other words, it has the combination of this initial momentum and the, uh, and the impulse. And this is my final moment. So this is for A. Let's see what it looks like for B. Okay, so if I ignore A for now, B has negative momentum, so it's traveling in the negative direction, but there is a positive impulse, okay, going to the, to the right, caused by A hitting it. And since I'm saying like they're both gonna continue to the right, this impulse has to be bigger than the initial momentum. Because if it's smaller, it means that it's gonna continue to the left. So this is the initial momentum. This is the amount of impulse, which is in the positive direction, caused by A hitting it. And my final momentum is about that much, right? This is the final momentum. So this is just like the energy uh, bar chart. Now let's look at the case where we look at the whole system as one. And this is extremely, it's extremely important to realize that the interaction between A and B is internal now. So which means it's not gonna show up in the bar chart. In other words, there is zero impulse. So 
Let's see what it looks like. So A has a positive uh, momentum. Let's say A has more momentum than B. Now B would be down here. Okay. And let's just say after they collide, this is stuck together, right? So this is A, this is B. That's the initial momenta for both of them before they collide. Well, after they collide, if I'm assuming that they get stuck together and they move to the right, this is how much momentum there is. In other words, that's the difference between these two. So this is A and B, and that's the final momentum of A plus B. Okay, so let's do two more examples, and we're done. So let's try, uh, let's try an object A traveling to the right, an object B traveling to the right, but at slower speed, obviously, right? So the collision happens, and it's stuck together. I'm gonna pick my system to be A and B together, which means the interaction between them is internal, which means the impulse is zero, because the interaction happens to be inter uh, internal. So let's see what it looks like. So A has this much momentum, and B has this much momentum, it's going slower. Well, A and B together must have a combination of these two. All right, the next case is an object that's gonna break into two different parts, so it's gonna, there's gonna be an explosion inside. So the impulse, is internal to the system, so there will be no external impulse. Right? So I'm gonna try to do a momentum bar chart. So initially, let's just say they are not moving at first. So there is nothing in the beginning, right? I'm not even supposed to draw that, but I'm just telling you that there is nothing in the beginning. Let's see what happens at the end. At the end, A is gonna go to the left, so it's gonna have, and if I choose right as positive, so the momentum is gonna be negative, and A is gonna go to the right, and since there is no external impulse, momentum will not change. So the momentum of A has to be equal to the momentum of B. So if I add up these two, I should get zero. That's exactly what I had in the beginning. So let's do a case where these two objects are initially moving to the right, okay, and the explosion is gonna happen. So they're already moving to the right, so maybe I have some momentum, right? When the explosion happens, A goes to the left. So for A, maybe I'll have this much momentum, okay? And B goes to the right. So, so when I add up these two, I'm sorry, when I add up the last two, I should end up with what I started with. So for B, it has to be bigger. Bigger by how much? Bigger by that green box, okay? In other words, at this level, this little bit has to be equal to the green box. So this is B after, this is A after, and this is A, B before, because they were originally moving. And that's it.